How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Strictly Nintendo Podcast, where we are going to be having a unique discussion here, or at least a really fun one, in my opinion, where this week's podcast and next week's podcast will be playing off of each other and will be expanding off of the NX podcast and really just kind of touching on a bigger image here, a bigger picture. In this specific podcast, we are going to be talking about the Wii U and if it was worth it. Now, with the NX right around the corner to discuss if the Wii U is worth it, if you haven't bought one yet, that's a big discussion to have because there's too many unknowns, too many variables that make it very complicated. You know, we don't know what the NX is. Nintendo has said that they're going to continue to support the Wii U after the NX launches, but to what degree? There could be some unannounced games coming out this year. Next year, you know, we don't know what we're going to see, if there's going to be specific Wii U titles or if it's going to be simultaneous releases, you know, that come out on the NX and the Wii U at the same time until the Wii U is phased out. And we don't know if any Wii U titles would be ported over to the NX which is a possibility because here, if the NX is successful, then there's going to be plenty of people who own an NX that didn't own a Wii U, and there's a lot of great experiences to have on the Wii U that would make sense to port over to the NX. So we start getting into way too many variables, too many unknowns, so that's a discussion that gets very complicated, and I don't want to touch on that here. What I want to touch on here is, was it worth it for those who got into it early? And we're talking like from launch to two years in. I got in line about eight months after launch in the summer of 2013, and obviously, to no surprise to any of y'all, I'm happy with my investment. I am thrilled with the Wii U. Now, that doesn't mean that it's flawless. That doesn't mean that it's perfect. I just enjoy it. I'm happy I have it, and I've had a lot of fun with it, and we'll get to all the good in a minute, but there are some negatives that we have to go over. Now, getting to the things about the Wii U that could have been better, first and foremost, we know about the low third-party support. Now, it wasn't non-existent. Actually, half of the games that I own on the Wii U are third-party. But, of course, there were key third-party games that we missed out on, and the support could have been better. But we'll get into that next week, because that's what next week's podcast is all about. Moving on, there were game droughts, and that was an issue, because obviously, going months without a game... You know, it's it's software that sells hardware, so not having a steady flow of games was a problem. Furthermore, there weren't the must-have Nintendo IP at launch. There was no Super Mario 3D World, Smash Brothers, or Mario Kart at launch. It's Nintendo games that are going to drive sales for Nintendo consoles. And then there's also missing key franchises like Metroid and F-Zero, and now we don't even get a Wii U exclusive Zelda. The OS is definitely clunky, you know, I mean, for the most part, it's neat on how you can, uh, you know, organize things in folders and so forth like that, move around your tiles, I like that, but if you go into, like, the system settings, or if you go into your me settings or anything like that, and you want to come back to the main menu, there's just this lag, this disconnect that really shouldn't be there. And then there's Miiverse, which is, is cool, it's a little bit clunky to navigate, And I think one of the biggest things I would complain about it with is uh, the fact that you have to wait until launch day before the forum for a game is available. I think it would make more sense to have it available a month before the game launches. That way we have a central place that all Nintendo fans, all Wii U owners can go to and discuss this game ahead of time and we can share news and ideas and, you know, talk about what we're looking forward to with the game, what we may be concerned about, etc., And if it's a Nintendo IP, then, you know, somebody from Nintendo could actually post and keep us up to date or share some cool things like that. You know, be like, hey, we just put up a new video on our YouTube channel. Check it out. It's going to explain this. And that would also be a good way for Nintendo to keep track of concerns and answer them in questions. So if people were like, for instance, Star Fox Zero, there was this controversy about the controls, even though they're really good if you know how to utilize them properly. And Nintendo could have honed in on that because they would have been able to see that in Miiverse and then do a video on the controls and really communicate better to the gamers. So I think that there's some evolution that Miiverse needs to take on. And then there's the eShop. For the most part, I like it. I found everything I've ever wanted on it. It's pretty easy to use. I think the biggest issue with it is the search function. And the problem I have with it is, is again, let's say you search Star Fox and you're probably searching Star Fox to find Star Fox games. You're probably looking for Star Fox Zero or Star Fox Guard or Star Fox Command or something like that. You know, you want to buy a game because you're on the eShop, right? Makes sense. And it's like halfway down or all the way down at the bottom of the search results and there's a whole bunch of videos up top. 
shouldn't the software, shouldn't the games itself take priority in search results? So that needs to evolve a little bit better, but for the most part, I love it. And obviously with my Nintendo, I really like the direction Nintendo's going. Now going into more hardware specific issues or things that I don't like about the Wii U, the lack of an ethernet port. That's an issue for me. The only major devices I have that I use Wi-Fi on is my tablet and my 3DS. I cannot stand Wi-Fi and I will never buy a Wi-Fi extender because those are horrible devices and I'm surely not going to be using it for serious online gaming. Now I do have the USB to Ethernet adapter, and for the most part, it works all right. You know, I don't really have any issues when I'm playing Splatoon or Mario Kart 8 or anything like that, but the biggest problem I have is it takes forever to download and install software. And if you're downloading a game or an update, good luck streaming from Netflix or YouTube without having lag issues. You're in the middle of watching a YouTube video and it just like goes on for a minute and then stops and starts buffering and then goes on for 30 seconds, stops and starts buffering. So there's a bottleneck there. It should have had an Ethernet port and it should have had more internal storage space. And yes, I do have a external USB hard drive. I have a half terabyte and it's great for storage. It's wonderful for storage, but it sucks for gaming. You know, I mean, if I'm playing some casual indie game or like a pinball game or something like that, sure, it's fine. But if I play anything major, I have problems. I have load lags. I have frame rate drops. I've even had games lock up on me. And all of those issues were resolved when I copied the game from the hard drive to the internal flash memory of the Wii U system. And I was able to enjoy the game once it's copied over. Now, I'm used to that with Steam. I don't keep all the games in my Steam library installed on my PC. You know, I'll have the ones that I'm playing installed. And when I'm finished, I uninstall them. And then I download and install a new game. But because that USB connection that we're relying on with the Wii U takes a long time to move games back and forth. So it's just more of an efficiency thing. You know, it, it wastes time. But that's about it. That's really about the only things that I could complain about on the Wii U. Everything else is really solid. The gamepad keeps in line with Nintendo's tradition of evolving how we interact with games. NES, D-pad, SNES, four action buttons, and shoulder bumpers. N64, analog stick, trigger, rumble pack. Of course, the GameCube was in line with the competition's consoles, so there was no controller evolution there. But then we get to the Wii, and you had the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and you had the balance board. Same thing with the game pad. Now, obviously, not everybody did a great job of utilizing it and realizing it and using it to its fullest potential. Even Nintendo dropped the ball in many aspects. But there are some very notable games that did a great job of utilizing the game pad and utilizing it not just in making it a central part of how you interact with the game, but actually utilizing it in many ways to make it a multitasker, such as Lego City Undercover, Splatoon, Pikmin 3, Super Mario Maker, Splinter Cell Blacklist, Zombie U, Mario Kart 8, Star Fox. These all did great jobs of utilizing the gamepad. And then you have notable mentions such as the Batman games, Bayonetta, Wonderful 101, Super Mario 3D World actually used it in some unique ways even though it wasn't very expansive, Hyrule Warriors, and even Need for Speed Most Wanted You. All of these games did a great job of utilizing the gamepad second screen touchscreen aspects and really changing how you interact with the game. As I mentioned before, hands down, Splinter Cell Blacklist for the Wii U is the best version of that game solely because of the gamepad features. Furthermore, the Wii U brought Nintendo consoles to the HD era with beautiful HD graphics and great audio over HDMI. You have the ability to organize your menu and put apps or files into folders and really just kind of clean up that interface. One of the coolest things about it is the home button, mostly because you can hit it while you're in the middle of a game and then go to Miiverse or other social media and post screenshots of an exact moment in the game. Or if you're stuck in a game, you can hit that home button, open up the internet browser and look up some walkthroughs and be like, crap, I'm an idiot. That's what I need to do. Hit the home button again and you're right back in the game where you left off. That is a really cool feature about this console. It's also great that it's backwards compatible, not just with the software, but more importantly with the controllers. Because now you have the gamepad and the pro controller, the classic controller, the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, the GameCube controller, and the balance board. That gives a ton of options on how you can interact with games. 
And I really do hope that the NX is backwards compatible with controllers as well. So if it is a success, developers have the ability to choose between a plethora of controllers to really tailor the experience of the game. Now, when it comes to the investment of a console, I have a general rule of thumb. And what that is, is that for a console to be worth the investment for me, I have to have a minimum of 15 games that I want to invest in. Now, I don't mean 15 games that I go out, I buy, I play, I beat them, I get bored with them, and I trade them in. I'm talking about 15 games that I want to keep. So whether it's a year, two, five, ten down the road, you know, if 10 years down the road I would get this nostalgic itch and I want to play the Wii U, I want to have 15 games in my library, minimum, so that I can still enjoy that console down the road. And when we look at my library, and this is just Wii U specific games, I have 25 physical games. We're already over that 15 game minimum. But then you add in eShop, Indie, and Virtual Console, I have 61 games for the Wii U. Now let's add in all the WiiWare Virtual Console games for the Wii and all my physical Wii games. I have over 120 games for the Wii U. And I do mean for the Wii U because my Wii is no longer my Wii. My Wii U is my Wii U and my Wii, and my Wii is my GameCube. So I have over 120 games for the Wii U. And I'm collecting Wii games all the time. In fact, I've picked up about six new titles over the past three weeks. And the Wii U has a lot to offer. There's an expansive selection of experiences that you can have on this console, from classic platforming to puzzle games and RPGs, shooters and horror games, unique exclusives like Hyrule Warriors, other great second-party experiences like Bayonetta Wonderful 101 and Lego City Undercover, some solid racers, great casual and indie games, as well as a solid variety of retro games in the virtual console selections. So yes, I think that the Wii U is a great console. It's highly underappreciated and has a lot to offer. And I think that history will show that it's a much better console than current public opinion of the overall sphere of gaming. And a lot of people will recognize that. I think a lot of people will look back and say, you know what, we were wrong about the Wii U. It's actually, it was a really cool box for the time. And from a collector's standpoint, you know, I mean, GameCube games hold their value a whole lot better than most. So I'm kind of wondering what some of my Wii U games will be worth 10 years down the road, especially some of the ones that I have that are still sealed, because I knew that they were going to be a little bit uh, harder to get. But overall, solid console, and I think that for those who did get into the console early, who did get it in like the first two years of its release, I think there's more than enough that it offers over the whole spectrum of its life, where the majority of Wii U owners are going to be very satisfied with having it. I'm happy it's part of my collection. I'm thankful for the thousands upon thousands of hours of entertainment that it's given me over the years, and I look forward to continuing to enjoy the experiences that the Wii U offers even 10 years down the road. And that will do it for this episode of the Strictly Nintendo Podcast. Until the next one, take care.